Hi, my name is Corey Hart. I'm an education specialist with Mont Fish and Wildlife. And this is part three of a four part series called Scat and Tracks. It's designed for elementary age students, hopefully like yourself, grades K through six. And today we're gonna to be focusing on squirrel, gray squirrel in specific. So you probably have gray squirrel around your schools. They can be found just about everywhere in Vermont but are more prominent in certain regions. And we're gonna be talking about that today. First thing we're gonna talk about is a little bit of identification. So gray squirrel have several different names. They're commonly referred to as either gray squirrel, banner, banner tail, silver tail, or uh, cat squirrel is another popular name for them. So gray squirrels are fairly easy to identify. Uh, they're known for their big bushy tails. So I have just a tail of a gray squirrel right here in my hand. The rest of the body of the squirrel is typically going to be uh, gray and silver in coloration with the underbelly a really prominent white. And you'll see a right, a picture of the squirrel right there on the screen where you can see that really prominent uh, white underbelly. Now when we're out looking for evidence of squirrels um, or the specific habitat that I want, we're focusing on three key species of trees. So I want either oak, hickory, or beech trees. And depending on the mass production we had that year, there might be more squirrels in one area than another. Meaning when I say mass production, I mean how many acorns or beech nuts uh, were produced that year. So where we are right now, we have a lot of oaks all around us and there's actually a lot of squirrel sign all around. We happen to be in the, in the forest right now but you can easily find gray squirrels probably around your school. Most schools have, have oak trees out in the front. That's a really popular location to go out and, and look for squirrels. In our Northeast Kingdom of, region of Vermont, you're not gonna find as many gray squirrels up there. What you will find instead is the red squirrel, which we're not highlighting today, but you see right with a picture on your screen right there, you're gonna see uh, looks similar to the gray squirrel, but it's entirely kind of a reddish brown color that goes across its entire body. And it's a lot smaller than the gray squirrel, where the gray squirrel itself is a pound to two pounds, and it's actually a really good food species, and we have a hunting season on it in Vermont. So the home range of a gray squirrel is typically one to 25 acres. During a day, they're only going to move about 160 feet. That means they're gonna move within their range that far. They're gonna move all over the place and run, especially if you've ever watched a gray squirrel. But from their original destination, they're typically not gonna move more than 160 feet or so within any given day. So gray squirrels typically den in two types of areas. So first, which I forgot to mention earlier, is canopy is extremely important in gray squirrel habitat, meaning they like to move around the tops of the trees and jump from tree to tree. And you've probably seen that if you watched gray squirrels for any, not, any period of time. Uh, so it's really important to have really nice thick canopies for them to run around up top. Uh, but the two types of dens that they might live in is a nest. So you see a lot of leaves kind of in the top of the tree. They don't prefer that though because that's not as safe for them. They, well, instead what they prefer is cavities. So it would be a, a hole in a tree that's only about three to four inches wide or in diameter. Any wider than that they don't prefer it. Because if it's too wide, other predators can get in and get them. So it opens them up to think to other species. So they, they specifically look for ones that are about three to four inches. And if it's bigger than that, they're gonna leave that alone. They won't choose that as a den site. So one thing that might actually surprise you when we talk about diet of gray squirrels is that gray squirrels are actually omnivores, meaning that they eat both plants and animals. And a lot of people don't realize that. They just assume that they just eat nuts but they do eat other things as well. So during the fall, when uh, acorns are more uh, really readily available, that's primarily what they're gonna be eating. During the spring though, they're gonna be going, they're eating things like buds, but they're also uh, like to target things like small bird eggs and things like that. So things that we don't necessarily think of as being a food source for gray squirrel. So they do eat both plants and, and animals, uh, especially things like insects as well and stuff like that. So gray squirrels are known as quarters, meaning uh, they like to gather up their nuts or their acorns or beech nuts, whatever they may be, and they scatter them around in the different types of food caches, which they actually come back to uh, later in the year. 
there's some studies out there that show they actually have a surprisal retrieval rate uh, of about 90 for 95 percent success or so of going back to their that the original site where they cached it for trees that or for acorns or beech nuts whatever it may be that they don't retrieve typically those are on the outside of their range but what actually happens with those is they might grow into trees so unbeknownst to the squirrels they're actually planting trees uh, which is kind of a really neat thing so nuts are really crucial to, to the survival of squirrels uh, especially to get them through the winter months in years where we have a really poor mass crop meaning there's not a lot of acorns or beech nuts or whatever it may be squirrel mortality actually increases by 25 percent compared to a year when we don't have a good mass crop so it's crucial that we have uh, plenty of plenty of forage for them in the woods. But that's not always the case. Some years we just don't have a good mass crop and we'll see a, a decline uh, in squirrel population. And that's because of the available food that's there for them. So squirrels are sexually mature at only eight to 11 months of age, meaning at that age, they're actually ready to reproduce. And one really interesting thing about squirrels compared to a lot of other species is they can reproduce twice in a year. There's two breeding seasons. There's one in January and there's one in June. Uh, during each litter, they can have about two to four uh, squirrels. As I said before, food availability is crucial to squirrel survival. During a really good year of available food, 40% of squirrels will produce a second litter. Compared to a year when there's poor, poor food availability, almost 0% of squirrels produce a second litter. So an interesting fact about squirrels that a lot of people don't know is they only live about one to two years of age and they actually have an annual mortality of about 50 percent meaning about 50 percent of squirrels don't survive the year that's increased for the young so for juvenile squirrels uh, so those that are not sexually mature yet they have about a 75 percent mortality rate again these numbers can really fluctuate depending on the, the amount of available food that we have out in their habitat for them. So it's about time for you to go out with your class or your parents and look for signs of squirrel. With squirrel, we're looking for a couple different things. The first sign we're gonna be looking for, usually found under areas where you have um, oak trees or beech trees, is gonna be a sign of forage, meaning areas where they have actually been eating and uh, scraping at the ground to get acorns and things like that. And you'll see right here where it's kind of, the ground almost looks like it's chewed up a little bit. And one big giveaway too is I have a lot of acorns right here. And oftentimes the squirrels, if you find areas where they've been eating, the squirrels are gonna be, or the acorns are gonna be split right down the middle, flat, kind of even, uh, where they've been biting at them. And that helps us to distinguish between other types of critters that might be eating the acorns. So in addition to finding signs of forage, you might also hear them chirping. So right now you're gonna hear, we're gonna play a sound of the squirrel chirping for you. And when you're out in the woods, it's really important to be quiet if you're looking to hear them. And we're gonna talk about something else we can do to help us actually find squirrels. But before we do, one thing I wanna point out is scat. So you might not, you might have a hard time finding squirrel scat actually in the wild, because it's not very big. So the best way to think, I've got some in my hand. It's usually in a clump, only about an inch or two in diameter. A lot of times you'll find it almost in a circle and it's typically, I like to think of it being about the size of a tic-tac. So a lot of times when I'm thinking about scat, not that I think about scat a lot, but I like to compare it to things I'm familiar with. So with squirrel scat, it's really commonly referred to as about the size of a tic-tac. So if you're familiar with candy and things like that. So the last sign of squirrel, and this is kind of unusual when we're doing these videos, is you have a really good chance when you go out with your class of actually seeing a squirrel. But it's only if we're super quiet and we do a couple things first. And we're going to show you right now. Stop. So with your class, one thing that you're going to want to do is actually go out and find a spot and we have a lot of oaks and be really quiet. But I want you as a class to actually go find a nice spot to sit down. So I've got a log I can sit on here. And if we actually sit and we're quiet for about five to ten minutes, we're going to actually start to see sign of squirrel. It only takes about five to 10 minutes in an area like this, if we're nice and quiet, for the squirrels to actually start to show themselves. And we might see them run along on the ground, or we might actually see them way up in the treetops where they're moving around. Because remember, they really like those canopies. 
But if we're sitting on the ground with our class and we're, we're loud, we just won't see them because they're not going to come out for us. Uh, but unlike the other species we've been talking about so far, like with gray fox, if we were to do this, we, we would not see them because that's, they're not out there in the day. And they would know you're there. But gray squirrel, if you stay nice and quiet, you'll probably have a really good chance of finding them. So get out there with your teacher and have some fun.